These places are condemned to live in a horrible and endless loop where they are stuck in time. These are the stories of the most deadly and abandoned theme parks around the world. Fast, fast, fast. Joyland Amusement Park, Kansas once upon a time, the town of Wichita, Kansas was home to Joyland Amusement Park, the largest theme park in central Kansas. Founded by Lester Ottaway and his sons, this park was in full operation for 55 years, till it was closed in 2004. For two years after that, parts of the park were reopened, but it was closed again in 2006 this time permanently. Since then, this abandoned theme park has been shrouded in mystery. What is the story behind it? This park was originally founded to house a miniature 12-inch gauge locomotive. Herb, one of Lester's sons, had purchased this train from another abandoned theme park. Herb, who was a race car builder, restored this train. He and his family took the train on tours to county fairs in Kansas and Colorado. After a few years, in 1949, they decided to give it a permanent home. Thus began the journey of the 57-acre Joyland Amusement Park. Till the early 1970s, the park was successfully run by the Ottaway family before they retired and sold it to Stanley and Margaret Nelson. The Nelsons were responsible for introducing many of the most popular rides in the park, such as the Wacky Shack, a two-story dark ride that featured illusion effects and psychedelic lighting tricks, and the famous wooden roller coaster, among many others. They also replaced the famous miniature train with the first ever C.P. Huntington miniature train built by Chance Rides. The train even carried the serial number one. However, disaster struck the park in 2004 when a 13-year-old girl fell 30 feet from the Ferris wheel and got seriously injured. This was the first domino that fell, eventually causing the demise of the park. But some would say that the park had already been on its way towards abandonment. Following the Ferris wheel disaster, an investigation was conducted by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Division which found several safety issues with the park. When we look back at the operations of the park, we find that there were several other incidents such as this. In the early 1960s, before the era of animal rights activism, the park had featured several animals. This included an eight-month-old lion that bit a caretaker, causing three deer to escape in the process. Out of the three, only one deer survived. In 1964, the park was sued because a little girl had smashed her teeth into the steering wheel of a bumper car. The tragedies only increased as the years went by. In 1977, a seven-year-old boy fell to his death from the roller coaster. In the early 1980s, an employee was stabbed to death by two people in the park. Towards the end of the same decade, a maintenance worker was crushed by the roller coaster. He had been cutting weeds underneath it and had not heard the ride coming. The 2004 incident, although not as severe as the previous ones, was the beginning of the end for the park. It is clear that the park has a penchant for tragedy, having seen everything from injuries to death to even murder. Perhaps it is better for the citizens that the park remains closed. Hold on guys, wait a minute. Is that a ghost? No, it's something worse. Someone is trying to steal our channel, but don't worry. Even in abandoned places like this, we're protected by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. What this person doesn't know is that Atlas VPN has a data breach monitor that, just by inserting your email, alerts you if your information has been leaked. So it gives you time to change your passwords. And not only that, but Atlas VPN has the power to unlock thousands of titles from streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and other services that are locked by geolocation. You can check out shows that are no longer on the US Netflix library, like Friends, The Office, or Rick and Morty. Just open the Atlas VPN app and simply connect to the country of the library you'd like to unlock. And like magic, you can start streaming your favorite shows without worrying about their availability. Atlas VPN is supported on any device, and they are running a huge discount on their three-year deal for just $1.39 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. The deal won't last for long, so make sure to check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. So, now that this problem has been solved, let's go back to the video. The aura of tragedy surrounding the park does not even end with its demise. Since 2006, the park has been looted and vandalized several times, and its walls have been covered with graffiti. In 2012, long after the park was abandoned and left to the elements, a maintenance building in the park caught fire. Although no one was hurt, the police suspected arson. In 2015, a windstorm damaged the roller coaster so extensively that it had to be taken apart for safety reasons. By 2018, the Wacky Shack was one of the few rides that had remained intact, 
and it too was destroyed by fire. With all its rides either damaged or dismantled, the park, which served as a joy for generations of Kansas citizens, now looks like something out of a horror movie. Gulliver's Kingdom, Yamanashi, Japan Our next abandoned theme park takes us all the way to Kamakwashiki in the Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan. Inspired by the novel Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, this theme park has a giant 147-foot statue of Gulliver lying down. The statue is tied down and surrounded by the tiny Lilliputians, making one feel like they have stepped right into Lilliput. The theme park even had a nice view of Mount Fuji. For all intents and purposes, Gulliver's Kingdom sounds like a storybook theme park. Why then was it abandoned? The decision to build this park was an impulsive one taken by the government of Japan in the 90s to boost the economy. But right from the beginning, the park ran into bad luck, leading it to its impending doom. The construction of the park was financed by Niigata Chuo Bank, which collapsed due to non-performing loans. There were also a lot of employment controversies, even during the construction phase. The park was in operation only for four years. Even during this time, it barely had any rides. Apart from the giant statue, which was the park's main attraction, the most notable rides were a bobsled track and a luge course, neither of which were for kids. But the main reason for this park's failure was its unfortunate location. The park was built near Aokigahara, the infamous suicide forest of Japan. It is the second most popular suicide spot in the world, and more than 500 people have been said to have taken their lives here in the last 70 years. And if this wasn't enough, the Kamakwashiki village was also the location of the headquarters of the Elm Shinrikyo Doomsday Cult. Back in 1995, this cult had been responsible for the sarin gas nerve attacks in the Tokyo subway system, which had resulted in the deaths of 13 people. Their nerve gas production facility was also rumored to be in the same area. The park's proximity to such grim locations put off people from visiting it, leading to its eventual demise. The stunning backdrop of this park only added to its eeriness. With nothing there other than the huge Gulliver statue, which is pinned to the ground by his hair, it looks like a city that was abandoned after a gruesome murder. The park was finally demolished in 2007. Dunblobin, Crinkly Bottom Theme Park, England in the 1990s, the BBC ran a popular family entertainment show called Noel's House Party. Created by Noel Edmonds, this program was set in the fictional town of Crinkly Bottom. One of the most popular characters of the show was Mr. Blobby, who was, as the name suggests, a pink blob. He communicated solely by using the word blobby. Mr. Blobby became so popular that it led to a supposed blobby mania. To capitalize on the popularity of the show as well as Mr. Blobby, Noel Edmonds and his production company Unique decided to open theme parks based on the show. In 1994, they opened a crinkly bottom theme park in Cricket St. Thomas, Somerset, the first of three. It was being promoted as Britain's first TV leisure park. The main attraction of the Cricket St. Thomas Park was a huge pink blobby themed house called Dunblobbin. Apart from this, it included other themed areas based on Naughty and the animals of Farthing Wood. The park saw over 500,000 visitors within its first season. A couple even had their wedding there, with Mr. Blobby as their best man. Everything, however, was not rosy. Within a few weeks after the opening, Problems began cropping up, from concerns over planning permissions to noise complaints by neighbors to rumors about maltreatment of elephants. The theme park ran into many hurdles. Edmonds wanted to build a replica of the Great House, but the Somerset City Council voted against it. After this incident, during the 30th anniversary of Crinkly Bottom, Edmonds parted ways with the park. Licensing constraints dictated that Mr. Blobby and all the other attractions should remain on site. The park was rebranded as Cricket St. Thomas Wildlife Park once more. Just two years later, however, the owners decided that they did not want to be associated with the controversial era of Crinkly Bottom. They closed down Mr. Blobby's house and attempted to destroy all traces of evidence of the pink blob from the park. This might seem like the end of Mr. Blobby at Cricket St. Thomas, but in the early 2000s, a few urban explorers stumbled upon Blobby's house. This started an influx of people wanting to take pictures with the infamous Pink Blob's house. Instances of vandalism and illegal raves being conducted there were reported. Ultimately, the owners demolished the house, except for the pink polystyrene toilet, which was placed in an art gallery. The second Blobby theme park opened in Morecambe in 1994 on the condition that the nearby Bear Lane railway station be promoted as Bear Crinkly Bottom. Things started going downhill soon after the park opened its gates. 
citizens started complaining about the lack of facilities and against the liquor license granted to the park on the grounds that it would encourage hooligan behavior. The labor-led council sued Edmonds on the grounds of misrepresentation and negligence because the park wasn't attracting enough visitors. Neither was it generating enough income. Support was withdrawn, and the park had to close down only after 13 weeks of being open. This whole fiasco was termed Blobbygate and cost taxpayers two million pounds. This park had the shortest lifespan of the three. The third and final Crinkly Bottom attraction was licensed to Pleasurewood Hills, a theme park, in 1996 in Lowestoft, Suffolk. During this time, the park turned its theater into a castle, but this ended just a year later when the ownership of the park changed hands. It would seem that no matter how many times Edmonds tried, the park was doomed to be a disaster. But for a brief period of time, it served as a pink slice of heaven for fans of Blobby. Yongmaland Theme Park In Yongmasan, in the Jungnang district in Seoul, South Korea, there lies a dilapidated amusement park called Yongmaland. Opened in 1980 as a humble, family-friendly amusement park, it had a good run for the first decade of its life. Then Latte World opened, and people quickly lost interest in this theme park next door. With not enough visitors left to sustain the park, they closed the doors officially in 2011. But is the theme park really closed? Well, it is, for the most part, and no, we don't mean that it's haunted, although there have been many rumors. Instead of leaving the park to decay, the owners had the brilliant idea of opening its doors to people for 5,000 won a day, which is $5. The abandoned rides and their fading colors have become hot spots for photography, cosplay events, and even filming music videos. Crayon Pop's Bar 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 video was inspired by this derelict park. If you want a true horror movie experience, you can request for the lights in the merry-go-round to be turned on at night for 30,000 won. Apart from the ghostly merry-go-round with its horses, the park has bumper car rides, an octopus ride, a viking ship, and a displaced clown motif roller coaster, among other rides. The rusted rides with their paint chipped away give a very vintage feel to the park, but their friendly faces invite you to take part in their decay. Taman Festival Bali The previous theme park might not have been haunted, but this one certainly seems to be. Our next theme park, Taman Festival, located in Bali, is known as the saddest theme park on the island. Not only was it a failed amusement park, but it was also a failed dream. Costing a whopping $100 million to build, the park now lies abandoned with crumbling buildings, rogue vines covering every surface, and piles of grass littering the ground. This once magnificent theme park is being swallowed by nature and looks like a haunted, dilapidated building straight out of a thriller movie. Stories of ghosts haunting this place are often told whenever this park is mentioned. In fact, the gatekeeper of the park was once recorded as saying that he sees ghosts every day. Just thinking about this park is enough to send chills down anybody's spine. With it being abandoned even before its gates were ever open to the public, this park is shrouded in mystery. More than two decades ago, the Indonesian government, along with a wealthy investor, began building this park in the hopes that it would turn the heavily trafficked beachside city of Sonor into a tourist hotspot. This park was supposed to steal everyone's breath away with its magnificence. It was supposed to feature the world's first entirely inverted roller coaster, Bali's biggest swimming pool, a fake volcano, a pit full of crocodiles, a 3D cinema, and a laser show, which was going to be the main attraction. The laser machines were meant to illuminate the night sky with a myriad of colors. This park would undoubtedly have changed the face of tourism in Bali. So then, why did it never open its doors to the public? There are various reasons for this, including a legend or two. Just a few months before the park was set to open, the Thai national currency tanked. Some say the park was open for six months before closing down, while others say that it was never opened at all. The Asian recession made the park go bankrupt, and they could not find anyone to purchase the park. Another reason cited is that there were disputes over land ownership. Legend also says that the park was struck by lightning, which damaged the laser machines. The cost for its reparations was so high that insurance companies refused to cover it. The owners had no choice but to abandon this park, leaving the land free for spirits and ghosts to make a home. Locals have dubbed this place a ghost town and steer clear of it. It is said that the crocodiles were never transported out of the park and were left to roam around freely inside. Apparently, they have taken a liking to human meat. There are even stories about visitors who went inside and never returned. A group of men stand near the gates of the park and ask you to pay 10,000 rupiah, which is the equivalent to $1, to enter. 
The buildings are covered with graffiti, and bats and mosquitoes and various other bugs have taken over the place. There is film tape strewn all over the theater building, and the roofs look ready to collapse. The park has truly been reclaimed by Mother Nature. But none of this has stopped photographers, graffiti artists, and travelers with a penchant for exploring off the beaten path from coming and visiting. If you don't mind a little bit of the supernatural and spotting an occasional killer crocodile or two, this 8 hectare theme park is definitely worth a visit. Six Flags New Orleans Spend the day at Jazzland Theme Park where the fun is at full blast. I gotta do that again! Jazzland in New Orleans on I-10 at the I-510 exit is filled with thrills for the whole family. Serious rides. 30 incredible rides and spectacular entertainment. This is great. Come for the thrills. Stay for the fun at Jazzland. Open daily at 10 a.m. Originally known as Jazzland, the Six Flags in New Orleans has stood abandoned for more than 15 years. This 147-acre park first opened in 2000. It was operated for two years under the name Jazzland by Alpha Smart Parks, but it was owned by a Spanish company called Parques Reunidos. In 2002, Six Flags purchased the lease for the park and rebranded it as the New Orleans branch of Six Flags. The park featured a myriad of rides, including an inverted roller coaster named Batman the Ride, which was relocated from a defunct park in Japan called the Thrill Valley. A Vacoma multiple looping roller coaster called the Jester, which had been sourced from the Texas branch of Six Flags, among many others. But the signature ride of the park was the Mega Zeph, yet another roller coaster. However, this roller coaster was unique in that it had a wooden roller coaster track built on a steel frame. This was done to prevent termite infestation as well as help the ride withstand strong hurricane winds. The construction of this roller coaster provides a strange sense of foreboding, as not even five years after its opening, the park was demolished by Hurricane Katrina and had to close its doors. The park was thoroughly submerged, and in the aftermath of the hurricane, what was left was a wasteland. The park was left standing in nearly seven feet of water, and all of its rides had suffered extensive wind and water damage. One of the only rides that was lucky enough to escape without too much damage due to its elevated platform and corrosion-resistant structure was the Batman ride. This ride was refurbished and relocated to the Six Flags in San Antonio, where it was unveiled as the Goliath. Unfortunately for the Megazeph, even the hurricane-resistant structure could not protect it from the damage due to long-term submersion in salt water. The park was declared to be a total effective loss, and Six Flags began talks with the New Orleans government to get out of its 75-year lease. In 2009, the lease with Six Flags was finally terminated because of their bankruptcy proceedings. It is currently under the ownership of the Industrial Development Board of New Orleans. With almost all of its equipment damaged and broken, a very spooky aura surrounds this park. Urban explorers, photographers, thrill-seekers, and even just curious citizens often hop the fence to take a look around. It is also a popular location to shoot films. Be warned, however, that entering the park is illegal and may be considered trespassing. There have been many attempts to revamp the park over the years, but none of the ideas were implemented. In 2009, Nickelodeon suggested turning it into a Nickelodeon-themed park. In 2011, there were plans to construct a shopping center called Jazzland Outlet Mall. There were even talks of reopening this park under its original name, Jazzland. Finally, the decision was turned over to the mayor. As of May 2021, two proposals have been finalized for its redevelopment. One was Bayou Phoenix, which plans to build a water park, a hotel, sports complex, and travel center. Another was Kiernan West and Shield One, which plans to build an urban farm, education center, and transportation hubs. No matter who wins, one thing is very clear. The park will no longer exist as we know it. So, what do you think? Which one of these parks do you think is the scariest? If you want to see more abandoned stuff videos, check these out and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the world of theme parks. Interested in behind-the-scenes content? Be sure to check out our social links in the description.